One of the few pictures that has survived my many moves is of me as an infant with my brother. The punctum for me comes from the glistening tears, barely discernible in my eyes. Who knows the cause of the tears, but they seem to foreshadow what is to come. My mom's favorite photo of our family, the last picture snapped before Daddy and Max died when I was eight years old. It was 1970, and I was battered and bruised by my dad's death. We were supposedly having the time of our lives at Disneyland. I was obsessed with the looking everywhere to see if my dad hadn't really died, but just moved to California and was in some kind of fugue state which blocked his memory of us. I grew up in Rock Island, Illinois, where I was taught the ideals of honest work, family, and small town values. We had John Deere, International Harvester, and Farm All. There were homecoming parades, and there was Lee's beer truck, Blue Collar Utopia. I couldn't wait to wriggle my way out. The North was all about sadness and escape. Words would be my escape. In first grade, I devoured books. I discovered my escape through simple stories of Sally, Dick, and Jane. My teacher recognized this hunger, and she put me in my own independent reading group. One of my earliest memories is sitting at my desk reading and coming upon a word I didn't know. I was so anxious to continue the story that I would interrupt whatever my teacher was doing to ask for help. In school, I learned that words were beautiful things. I grabbed my BA in journalism and packed my 1972 Pontiac Ventura with all my earthly possessions. I had to get away from the Midwest. South Carolina, the land of Scarlett O'Hara, would be my escape. I interviewed for a job as a reporter over the phone, and two weeks later was on my way to the Seneca Journal, having never even seen the place. As a lifestyle editor, I discovered the satisfaction of telling a different story every day, other people's stories. My own were too painful. After getting my master's degree, I had to leave my beloved South Carolina because all the jobs were up north. I hated everything about Dayton, Ohio another provincial town in the Midwest. I needed something exotic, something far, far away from the United States. I was offered a job opportunity in Japan for six months. With only a moment's hesitation, I packed my world into two suitcases and left everything I knew, home, family, friends, church, car, clothes, language, pop culture, music, TV, and movies. There were the expected moments of culture shock and homesickness, but that six months stretched into six years. Loss came again my first year in Japan when my mom was killed instantly in a car accident back home. That the most devastating event of my life had happened to me twice sent me spinning into despair. But, once again, I pushed into the deficit, making the bold decision to adopt a baby from China. I didn't know if anyone would actually give a baby to a single woman, but I wanted to try and make a difference. This is about the time I discovered Angelina Jolie. I watched Beyond Borders, which told the story of a naive idealist who travels to Africa to save the world 
only to realize she is the one who needs saving. She strode forward boldly, even when she had no idea what she was doing. I didn't need to imitate the movie character who tried to make a difference, or even Jolie herself, who at that time had adopted a child from Cambodia and another from Africa. I was already living her life. As I watched her in this movie, the punctum came in the full lips. I don't know why, but I am drawn to them. You can see love there. Ulmer says that mysteries help you unlock your problem-solving abilities, the techniques you've used to solve problems in the past. I've discovered for me that it is pushing through losses, even heart-wrenching ones, and persevering on. As one of my favorite books of wisdom puts it, we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. <laughs>